So in this problem, we are looking at a bar of mass m and length l. Now, a distance d from the hinge, so this can rotate around a hinge there at the origin. A distance d from that hinge, it is struck by a particle of mass m going at some velocity v, which uh, is coming into the x-axis at an angle theta with respect to the uh, line that is normal to the x-axis. Okay, so the first thing is what is the moment of inertia after the inelastic collision? We know it's an inelastic collision because the material of the ball is such that once it strikes the bar it's gonna get stuck to it. So it's not gonna bounce back, it's just gonna adhere to the bar. So now we know that the moment of inertia is going to be equal to the moment of inertia of the bar by itself, um, of the rod, um, plus m times d squared, m being the mass of the, of the object that gets stuck to it, and d is the distance from the axis of rotation. Okay? So... The moment of inertia of uh, a bar of uniform density that is rotated around one of the ends perpendicular to the length of the bar. You can look that up in your book or somewhere else and you'll find a table of moments of inertia and you will see that that's equal to ml squared over 3. Uh, so then we just need to perform that simple addition and that is the moment of inertia of the system after the inelastic collision. Now, calculating that moment of inertia for the rod is actually not very difficult, especially if you know calculus. Now, the definition of the moment of inertia is mass times the square of the distance, but now we have to integrate or sum every infinitesimal piece of mass, dm, times the distance, r squared, um, from the axis of rotation and obviously we integrate that from 0 to L because the bar extends from the coordinate x equals 0 to the coordinate x or r equals L. So what is dm? dm is gonna be the amount of mass that you have for every little piece of linear displacement that you have meaning it's kind of like the uh, mass per length times the length and that mass per length usually is deno denominated as lambda and it's simply equal in this case to the total mass divided by the total length because the density is uniform if it were not uniform then lambda would have a more complicated form so then we do the integration we replace the m by m over l times dr. Now m over l, that's a constant, so we can pull that out of the integral. And we just have to do the integration of r squared dr, which is a very simple integration. That's gonna give you r cubed over three summed over, uh, summed over zero to three. So that's just gonna make the r go to l. Uh, so it's going to be m over l times l cube over 3. The l's cancel out, and there you have the moment of inertia of the rod. Okay, there's a part b to this problem. And that is, what is the angular speed of the bar after it has been struck by this mass? Okay, well, we know that angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular speed. So there we go, we know the moment of inertia and also we know that the angular momentum of the system is not changed. So then the angular momentum final LF has to be equal to the final momentum sorry, the final momentum LF has to be equal to the initial angular momentum L0. So we simply uh, divide by the moment of inertia and we get that the angular momentum 
has to be equal to L0 over the moment of inertia. We know what the final moment of inertia is, and we can figure out what the initial moment of inertia, so, sorry, what the initial angular momentum is, um, because we know that the bar was not rotating, so that one's not gonna have any initial angular momentum. And so the only angular momentum is gonna be that uh, that we get from the mass traveling through space at some distance r from uh, what's going to become our axis of rotation that's going to be our origin so that's how we know what r is going to be and as usual the cross product gives us a sine function so r cross p0 is going to be r0 p0 then sine phi where phi is the angle between the velocity of the mass and the bar. Now to put in terms of theta there that we see that phi is going to be simply 90 minus theta. Um, R0 at the moment that the mass strikes the bar is going to be d. Uh, the momentum P0 is going to be m times b. So our initial angular momentum is dmb sine of 90 minus theta. And as you know from your sine and cosine functions, sine of 90 minus theta is equal to the cosine of theta. So then your final angular momentum is dmb times cosine theta over if, where if was already derived in the previous uh, part of the problem and it's equal to m times d squared plus ml squared over 3.